understand and know and trust that there is good news from quarantine. No, 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 no. God is not limited by the ministries of Sunday school. God is not limited by the ministries of a music ministry. God is not limited by the ministries of preaching from a pulpit. God is not limited by any of that. God is still sending you bread right up under the door. And I Greetings and God bless you. It gives me great joy and privilege to be able to give you this inspiring word from the Lord today uh, while we remain in the safety of our homes amid this coronavirus pandemic. It's so important that we maintain safety for ourselves, but most importantly, we maintain safety for those that are the most fragile and most susceptible among us. I encourage each of you all of us, all of the Pilgrim family, to make sure that you engage in and fully engage in the protocols which have been mandated or in fact suggested and recommended by the CDC and our local and national governments. This season will pass and today's message, I want to let you know just that, that this season it will pass. But in this time we have to use our wisdom and we have to use our faith. And we cannot separate our faith from our wisdom. It is my prayer again that this pandemic and the current situation that we are under would swiftly pass through and we'd soon be back to normal. I'd love to be able to be with you in worship. Blessed to be able to come with you through this digital method. Here I am. I'm at home. Uh, you may notice a little unshaven. Uh, but again, that's the joy of just being home. So again, it's my prayer that this message is encouraging and inspiring to you. And so what I want to do today is look at a passage of scripture in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7. I want you in your free time to read the entire chapter. I think it will give you a, a better understanding of what the Lord is doing. But I'm only going to read a few verses from the 7th chapter so that we can understand what the Lord is saying. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, But Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain on whose hand the king leaned said to the man of God, If the Lord himself make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Verse 3, Now there were four men who were lepers at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, Let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we'll die there. And if we sit here, we'll die also. So come now, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. The Lord had made the army of the Syrians hear the sound of chariots and of horses and the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel have hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come against us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses, their donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent, ate and drank, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. When they came back, they entered another tent and carried off things from it and went and hid them. Verse 9, then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. Verse 10, so they, came to the, so they came and called the gatekeepers of the city and told them, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no one to be seen or heard there, 
nothing but the horses tied and the donkeys tied around the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out, and it was told within the king's household. And the king rose in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking, when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants said, let some men take five of the remaining horses, seeing that those who are left here will fare like the whole multitude of Israel, who have already perished. Let us send and see. So they took two horsemen, and the king sent them after the army of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. So they went after them as far as to the Jordan, and behold, all they saw was littered garments and equipment that the Syrians had thrown away in their haste, and the messengers returned and told the king. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, now that you would, one, give me the ability of which I am not worthy, and two, Lord, that of which I am not able. Lord, I pray today by the person and power of your Holy Spirit that you, Lord, today would grant and permit me to preach. Bless, Father, now as only you can. Help, Lord, today this word to be a word of encouragement and inspiration to this nation, to the world, to realize, Father, that you are still a sovereign God, and you, Lord, are still in control. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, as we look at this passage of scripture in 2 Kings, I want you to have this title, this subject, this thought in your mind, a good report from the quarantine. If we look at this text, what we see is we see four lepers. The four lepers were outside of the city. These four lepers who were outside the city, they were quarantined, much like many of us are now. And these four lepers who were quarantined, they were, they were properly positioned to come back and give the king a good report. What I want someone to know today before I even get started into the message is the quarantine that you're currently under, the lockdown, the isolation, the order to stay at home, the things that have been shut down. What I want you to know that even today, that right now, God will give you a good report from quarantine. The times that we are now living in is a prime opportunity for the church to demonstrate the glory of God. It is in the darkest times that the brightest lights shine. And at this time, when it's such a dark time in America, such a dark time in the world, this is a time for the church, which is not the building, but this is a time for the church, the body, the individual people. This is a time for us to shine. It's a time for us to shine and continue to lift up the name of Jesus, continue to make sure that the world knows that Jesus came to save a world that was sin sick. We need to make sure again that in this time, the church continues to shine in this dark time. And what I want someone to know here as we look at again, a good report from the quarantine is this, that there's a quality word for you in the midst of your quarantine, wherever you are. You may not you may not have cho chosen to be in that situation, but there's a quality word for you. There's a redeeming word for you now that you've been pushed into reclusiveness. Is that in the darkest of nights, all right, in the darkest of nights, that's when the brightest stars shine. So what I want us to understand and know here today is this, that at the darkest times are right now, this is a time for the church to shine. It's a time for the church to shine and show the glory of God. It's a time for the church to shine and continue to be the loving individuals that Christ is calling for us to be, to show and reflect his love. I want you to know there's a quality word for you in your quarantine. I want you to know there's a redeeming word for you now that we've been pushed into reclusiveness. I want you to know that things and businesses may be shut down, but God is never shut out. Again, there is a good report that I want you to know from this quarantine. Now, Reader's Digest 1995, uh, author by the name of Darlene Gianni writes this. She says that uh, there was a patient who, who had an extremely infectious and extremely, uh, extremely life-threatening condition and the physician came to, to the patient and when the physician came to the patient, the physician said this. The physician said, I'm going to have to put you in quarantine and lockdown and you're going to have to survive off of a, of a diet of nothing more than pancakes and pizza. Uh, the, the patient who had this life-threatening sick condition, uh, the patient was then curious and asking the doctor, well, if pancakes and pizza, are they going to cure my condition? And the doctor said, no, it's just the only thing that we can slide up under the door. 
You miss me because see, understand this. Right now, understand you're in quarantine, but pizza, understand, and pancakes, bread is still coming under the door. And so right now we're here giving you and the Lord has given me this message to let you know that in the midst of staying home, in the midst of being in lockdown, in the midst of not being able to go and move like you always had, God is still sending you bread right up under the door. God's going to continue to give you bread, going to continue to give you a word. And as God continues to give you a word, your spirit will not wither. Your faith will not fail. Your confidence will continue to grow because God is going to keep sending you bread right up under the door. Someone you need to get that and understand here, you feel like because you can't get to the building. Someone you feel like because you're not going through your normal routine. Somebody you feel like because you're not pressing your way to Sunday school and Bible studies have been canceled and many of the ministries are no longer taking place at the church normally does. Oh, no, 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 no. God is not limited by the ministries of Sunday school. God is not limited by the ministry ministries of a music ministry. God is not limited by the ministries of preaching from a pulpit. God is not limited by any of that. God is still sending you bread right up under the door. And I want you to know that if you trust in the word of God in this day and in this time, what God will do, your spirit will continue to grow. Your confidence will continue to be strong and your faith will not fail you. There is a good word from quarantine. Now, when we look at this text here, what we find is we find many things in this text that are very similar to our current condition right here in America. Many things that we see that are similar, we see where the writer here in Kings talks about that they were selling, all right, they're selling barley and selling fine flour. We see economic instability. Oh, it's, 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 it's prevalent. Oh, economic instability. That's much of what we see right now, even in America. But we not only see economic instability, we also see disease. We see sick people that are quarantined. Ooh, it sounds like America right now. We see sick people who are quarantined. We see economic instability. But then notice when you look through 2 Kings, they never mention the name of the king. They never mention the name of the king, but the king is a king by the name of Joram. And this king by the name of Jehoram, they never mention his name because he was a wicked king. He was the son of Ahab and Jezebel. And this being the son of Ahab and Jezebel, he was a wicked king. And he's so wicked that the writer in Kings wouldn't even mention his name. It sounds like, again, like America. We have a wicked king, we have economic instability, and also we have disease which is causing quarantine. But then also what we see in the text is this. They're besieged by an enemy. They're surrounded by an enemy and they can't go out and no one can come in. I want to tell you today that this text right here in 2 Kings chapter 7, it shows me so much of what is taking place in America and I believe that what God has done in ages past is still relevant for us to draw wisdom and strength and encouragement from right now in 2020 in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. So I want you to know again, there is a good report from quarantine. Now in this time we've had our pleasures removed but as our pleasures have been removed we cannot forget our priority. Our priority should ultimately be God. Sometimes what God does is God allows pestilence. Sometimes God allows situations that are desperate and seem dark because what God wants us to do is God wants to focus on our priority and let go of all our pleasures. So there's a good word from quarantine. The other thing that we see in this text is we see the lepers that are outside the gate. They're outside the gate and I want someone to know this, social distancing is not something new. Social distancing is something that's not new. It's taking place in biblical days and social distancing that we're practicing now is nothing new. These lepers were social distancing themselves. They were outside of the gate because that was what the law required of the lepers. But here it is. They're outside the gate. The Syrian army is besieging the, the city and the lepers are outside the gate. They're not being fed. They're not being taken care of by anyone. They're in a desperate situation. The people inside the city are starving with famine, but they have a little bit. The lepers inside the gate, they have essentially nothing. And the lepers outside the gate, now here's what happens. They come to a decision and they decide, you know what? We can sit here at the gate and die. If we go into the city and try to get in, we're going to die because they're having a famine. They say, you know what? We're going to go into the Syrian camp. And maybe in the Syrian camp, we can find some mercy. Now, I want you to understand this as we deal again with the whole subject and issue of there being a good report from quarantine that it's important that we understand that we have to have 
patience. We have to have patience because, see, when we have patience to persevere through what the Lord permits, that's how we grow in our faith. That's how you're going to get through this situation right now. You have to have patience to persevere through what the Lord permits. I know it seems like this is something that is just ridiculously crazy. It seems like this is something out of the movies. It seems like this is something that would never happen. But understand this. The Lord is ultimately in control and the Lord has permitted it. If the Lord has permitted and allowed for it to happen, we have to have the patience to persevere. And if we have the patience to persevere, I know that there is glory. I know there's a blessing. I know there's favor. I know there's something great that God has for the church and the body of Christ and each one of us on the other side. Now, a few, few details from this text. We see the lepers and the lepers decide to go into the camp. But then also we read in the text where the officer, the right hand man to the king, he says, even if the Lord did open up the floodgates of heaven, even if the Lord did bless, could you, I don't believe that what the prophet is saying is going to happen. And I want to tell you now that we have to make sure that we trust and believe in God's word, even if it's unbelievable, even if it blows, even if it blows our mind, even if it's something that we can't conceive, we got to trust in the word of the Lord. Now, these four quarantine individuals understand they actually take a risk and they take this risk of going into the uh, going into the Syrian army and the risk that they take. It was a risk of a few. It was a risk of a few that ended up being a blessing to the many. And I want you to know just this today while we're dealing with this pandemic. Sometimes there has to be a risk of a few. I'm not saying that you need to go out and endanger yourself. But what I am saying is this is when God speaks, sometimes there's a risk of a few that will end up being a blessing to the many because what we have in the text there's good news from the quarantine because they went and they were the ones to realize that this that the, that the Israelites with Sumerian were staying in their city but the Syrians were already gone so again there's good news from quarantine and I want you to know we got to patiently wait on the Lord now when we look at this text you got to see this when you look at this text you got to get this point here the miracle in the text did not come from the presence of God the miracle came from the sound of God. When we look at the text, what we see is the, the, the these four lepers, they go into the Syrian camp, and they're going into the Syrian camp expecting to encounter the Syrians. But when they get to the camp, they find that the Syrians are nowhere there. And the writer tells us that the Syrians fled because they heard the sound. They heard the sound of what seemed like a mighty army coming against them. They heard the sound of what seemed like the Egyptians and, and others coming against them. And I want you to know, it was the sound that put the enemy at flight. I want you to know this right now, that you have to also know this. The sound will set your enemies at flight. Right now, while you're in quarantine, right now, when you're in lockdown, right now, when you're under an order of stay at home, make sure that you have the sound of the Lord going on in your house. Make sure that you're still singing songs of praise. Make sure that you're spending time in public and private prayer. Make sure that you have the sound of the Lord. And when the sound of the Lord is going forth in your house, that will set the enemy at flight. Just like in this text, and I believe that in this day and period where we're dealing with this pandemic, if we trust in the sound of the Lord. Sometimes it's not we see him. Sometimes it's not even that we feel or know he's there. Sometimes we're just calling on his name. And can I tell you the sound of the Lord that sounds so sweet? It's nothing better than the name of Jesus. And when you call on the name of Jesus, enemies begin to tremble. When you call on the name of Jesus, demons begin to flee. When you call on the name of Jesus, understand that will set your enemies at flight. So there's good news from quarantine, but I want you to know part of the good news came from the sound. It came from the sound that took place. It's in clearly in verses 5 and 7, but then also the sound of the Lord during this season it'll put disease at flight. The sound of the Lord at this season will put your enemies at flight. The sound of the Lord at this season, and we need to make sure that we have purposeful praise, and our purposeful praise is the sound of the Lord going forth. Now, when the quarantine, understand this, when the quarantine went into the Syrian camp, understand they also realized in verse 9 
that they could not keep it to themselves. And I want you to know today that as God is blessing some of us, as God will bless some of us, as we exercise patience and trust on trust in God as we're going through this process, what I want you to know and understand that you cannot keep it to yourself. These lepers who were quarantined, they got to the point where they realized the blessing, the favor, the anointing of the Lord was on them and they were walking in blessings that they didn't deserve. And understand this, they were at the gate and the people at the gate weren't even taking care of them. But these lepers still had so much Christ in them. They had so much God in them. They had so much of the word of God and understanding the right thing to do that even when the people in the city were not taking care of them, when they found a blessing that was more than they could handle, they went back and told the people in the city. What you got to get from here is understand this. God blesses you and as God blesses each and every one of us, it's not just for us to hold on to and for us to think we got something going on. It's for us to share with somebody else because God does not only want you to know he's great. God wants your neighbor to know he's great. God doesn't only want your neighbor to know he's great. God wants your whole block to know he's great. So in this time when you're spending again quality time at home, make sure that you're letting someone know how good and how great God is. Now, understand this also. As again, we're dealing with and talking about this subject of good news from quarantine, all right? As we're talking about good news from quarantine, we have, I want to tell you, make sure that you have patience. And as we have patience and wait upon the Lord, the Lord is going to do amazing things. I know it's unprecedented. I know it's something that you've never seen before. I know it's something that we can never imagine. But as we understand, there is good news from quarantine. But the good news from quarantine, part of that comes through us exercising patience. And the good news that came from this text is the children of Israel and the people from the city were able to go out and they were able to have plenty. They were able to have enough for them and their neighbor. They were able to have plenty of resources, plenty of food. And I want to tell you today that God has good news from quarantine and God wants to do the same thing for you today. There's good news from quarantine. Even looking at it from the gospel is always found in every portion and part of the Bible. And when we look at it here, even we can see here in this passage of scripture, we can see that they were surrounded by enemies. We can see they were locked in. They were confined. We can see they were limited in their movement and their ability. But then all of a sudden, the Lord moved. And when the Lord moved, he gave them freedom. Can I tell you, as it relates to the gospel, we were locked in and trapped by sin. Can I tell you that as we, as it relates to the gospel, we were the devil tried to limit and control our movement. But can I tell you what, when the move of Jesus came, Jesus gave us the freedom. He came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. There's good news from quarantine and I want someone to know today you feel like this situation that there's no way out. You feel like this situation is desperate and hopeless. I want to tell you right now God is still in control. God is in control and God is working all of this out. I want you to have faith. I want you to have I want you to have a good encouraging word. I want you to continue to hold on and trust the Lord. I want you today in this season and in this time to know there's a good news. In fact there's a good report from quarantine. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't have apprehension as God has you in a state of quarantine. God has you in a state of quarantine so you can find him. I believe God has put America in a state of quarantine so we can find him. And I want to encourage America. I want to encourage the church, whatever, I mean, whatever color, uh, whatever race. I want to encourage everybody to make sure that we find God in this time. And as we find God in this time, I promise you what God will do. God will slip you some bread right up under the door because there's good news. I want to tell you again, there's good news from quarantine. There's no way that I could deal with all the points and all the information from this text in the time given. At the end of this uh, video, you'll see some more points, which hopefully will be a blessing to you. Our churches are currently living in unprecedented times. I encourage you to pray for your pastors, pray for your churches, and continue, if at all possible, continue to give to the ministries of the church. The church has to continue to be the church in this time, and in fact, the church needs to be the church even more than now. I want to encourage all pilgrim friends and family that you can give by PayPal, www.pilgrimbaptistlinette.org, click the link for giving. You also may give by mailing in your check. You can mail in gifts and contributions to P.O. Box 268, Lynette, Alabama, 36862.
three. And it's my prayer that you stay safe and that you're blessed during this time. In a time of darkness, this is where the church has to shine the brightest. God bless you and remember that there is always good news from quarantine.